Now to understand patent infringement, particularly non-literal infringement, we have to actually look at claims. So today we will actually start the class, uh, sorry, we'll start the next part of the class really focusing on claims. Now before we get into claims, let me give you some perspective on why analysis, infringement analysis can be so tricky. Patent boundaries are fuzzy, okay? Um, yesterday I talked about the patent for a sol solid core golf ball. And if you notice, there are quite a lot of patents that are actually referred to in the solid core golf ball patent. And you could actually ask yourself, if you read these other patents, is this new solid core golf ball such an advance over the state of the art? In other words, is it a real advance over what existed previously? Now, if you want to go back even further to show how tricky the analysis can be, let's look at um, this Eva, Eva Maria Kiesler. Hedy known as Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar was an actress in the 1940s, 1930s. And though she was known as an actress back then, she is now more famously known as the inventor of a technology which is entitled Secret Communication System. Now, to describe this technology, you have to understand that. Um, she left her home country of Austria and fled to America during the war, or actually slightly before the start, the American entry into World War II. What she had done was she would worked with her collaborator, her musical collaborator, George Antile, to develop a scheme to help American surface ships defeat German U-boats. Now, the theory here, or excuse me, sorry, to help American submarines defer, defeat uh, German destroyers. Now, the, now, what happened was, if you had a submarine um, in the World War II era, it would fire a torpedo at a ship and destroy it. Now, because the torpedoes at that time moved close to the surface of the water, they were you could actually control them using radio waves. So all the destroyer would have to do is just block the radio waves. So Hedy Lamar's invention was to actually have the torpedo controlled by radio waves sent not by under one frequency, but by multi under multiple frequencies. And then the frequencies would change. So the signal would be jumping from one, uh, one frequency band to the other. It made it trickier for the surface ship to block the torpedo. Okay? And this is the basis for spread spectrum technology. Now, I bring this up because this patent, even though it is no longer valid because of the age, still is for technology that is the fundamental basis for two genera uh, second generation wireless, third generation wireless, and fourth generation wireless technology. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth are all based on this technology. This is the ancestor, if you will, of spread spectrum and um, modern wireless technology. And so if you want to say that the technology in your phone is based on this technology from World War II. If this patent were valid, you could legitimately ask yourself, well, is she entitled to, is the estate of Hedy Lamar entitled to royalties for everything that is now available in modern wireless technology? Which then also leads you to question, well, how much of an advance is what we have now over what we had then 
because everything is based on that. So this is part of the reason why technology and infringement in patents can be so tricky, is to actually define the barriers, what existed before, what exists now. So it's the novelty barrier has to be, uh, there's a novelty barrier that you have to question. Is this thing obvious over what existed? You can go and argue non-obviousness or inventive step and novelty for a long time when it comes to patent infringement. 